NAND and NOR gates have the special property of functional completeness. Now this means it's possible to create the primitive logic gates, so NOT, AND or, and OR gates, from a combination of NAND or NOR gates. So this means that all of the logic gates can be created. So the equivalent circuits can be derived using Boolean algebra and De Morgan's theorem. Now in these following examples, we're going to consider the NAND only implementations, but the NOR only imp implementations can be derived in a similar manner. So we're going to start off with a NOT gate. So we know this is the expression you know, for a NOT operator, so Y equals NOT A. So using the idempotence law, we can just OR in another term. So we know that this um, this doesn't change the expression in any way, just OR in the same term. And then on top of that, we can apply double inversion, because again, we know that double inversion just cancels out. So by applying double inversion to this, we're still not actually changing this expression. So this expression now at the bottom is just the same as the first one. So at this point now, we can start to use De Morgan's theorems. So remember, break the line and change the sign. So we can break, if we break this line here in the middle, so the bottom line, we can break that and we change this OR operator to an AND, we'll end up with this expression here. And then we can cancel out the, the double inversion, just as we saw before. So that on this, in these examples here, we've got the two the two double inversions there will end up cancelling out. So we get left with this um, operation. So this, at the top, is the same as this. So we can actually recognise this as a NAND function. So this is what we're looking out for. You know, so we know NAND is just a NAND operator with the output inverted. So we're looking for this kind of anything. So any AND operator with the output inverted. That's what we're kind of looking for. So we can see this is an AND. So essentially this is an AND gate with the inputs are the same. So rather than having X or Y or A and B on our inputs, we've got A and A on the inputs. And we can see that directly from the truth table. So if you look at the NAND gate truth table, anytime the inputs are the same, the output is just the opposite. So we've got two ones on the input, the output the one. So interpreting that as a circuit, we can see we get an, if we get a NAND gate and we join the inputs together, this is just going to be the same as a NOT gate. So a NAND gate with the inputs connected together is a NOT gate. So now we know how to make a NOT gate. So we can very easily make an AND gate. So we, if we get a NAND, a NAND gate and then follow it with a NOT gate, it's essentially going to cancel the the inverter on, on the end of the NAND gate to take it back to be a NAND function. So we cancel this bubble on the NAND output, so just to leave an AND gate, so we've got our, our NAND, put the NOT gate in front of it, and that will end up cancelling this and just leaving just with an AND gate. So we can see um, from the equation as well, so this is the equation for our AND y equals a and b. But again, we just applied double inversion to that. And we're not changing that function. We can put double inversion, then we'd end up, so this bottom part here, so it's, actually, it's a NAND function with another inverter on the output. So we've got a NAND gate followed by an, uh, an inverter. So for all, we just start with our normal or, or expression, A or B. And again, we can apply double inversion. So applying double inversion is a very useful trick. Because it doesn't actually change. It doesn't change the expression anyway. But it gives us, you know, when you apply double inversion, it normally gives you something then you can apply De Morgan's theorems to. So again, apply De Morgan's theorems. So break the line. So this line here, we'll break the line in the middle. And we'll change this all to an AND. And we get left with this. So these two expressions are equivalent. And again from this we can see this is another NAND function. So we recognise it as a NAND, a NAND function. 
but also that the inputs are inverted. So here we've got not A, NAND, not B. So that's just the NAND function with two inverters on the input. So I can actually see th this this one is also given directly from um, the Morgan's theorems. So the knots on the input cancel out because if we put um, you know if we put other if we put inverters here, this inverter is just going to cancel with these essentially. So we'll just get left just with this R function. So again, to get a NOR is very easy. We've just got the NOR equivalent. This is equivalent of an OR gate using NAND. So we can just put an inverter after that. And that will give us a NOR gate. We can also derive it in a very similar way. We get the expression for an OR gate using algebra de Morgan's theorems. You can uh, derive this circuit. So XOR. Is that, is, well, there's two versions of an XR as we'll see. So we can start from the normal XR expression. So this is, this is just the soft expression from the truth table for an XR. We can apply double inversion and then apply uh, De Morgan's here. So again, we break this line, break the line in the bottom, change this to an AND. So we get left with this expression. can actually see that that's several NAND functions kind of grouped together. So we've got this top NAND function, so the, the, the part sort of bracketed now in this very top bar, that, that gives us one NAND function. And the inputs to that, so actually these ones themselves are NANDs. And then further from that, you know, one of the inputs to these NANDs are inverted. So that gives us this five NAND gate implementation of an XOR. But it's actually possible as well to get a four NAND gate implementation. So this is a bit harder. We need to apply some of the rules that we've learned before. So again, starting from the normal XOR SOP expression, we can just OR in some extra term using the um, zero and a unit sum rules. So you can see here this A and not A, we know that's going to be zero. And again, that's zero. So or in, in zeros doesn't change this expression. You know, that's not going to change the behavior of the expression. Those terms are zero. And or in something with zero doesn't affect it. And if you inspect that, you can actually see you can start collecting the terms. So if you take these brackets and multiply it out, you'll see that you end up with this expression. So we can collect the terms and then start doing what we've done before. So apply double inversion. So apply double inversion on this side first. And then De Morgan's theorem. So again, break. Break that line and then change this sign. And we'll end up with the two... Um, Double inversion here, what can cancel. So we end up with this expression. And again, using the di distributive law, so essentially we're multiplying out that bracket. Apply double inversion to the entire expression. And then use De Morgan's again, so we're breaking that line here, changing that to a and. And they get left with this. So that looks very complicated. But if you start looking at it, you'll see that there's lots of NAND functions here. So for we'll just consider this the very top line. That is one NAND gate with these two on the input. So this gives us this NAND gate. And we expect each one of these in turn. So that's also another NAND. So this is also another NAND function. So this one will be from this gate. And this one here will give us this gate. And again, inspecting these further, we can see 
for this one, one input for this NAND gate is A, and the other one is another NAND function, so this is A and B for this point here, this will be A NAND B. So you can see we can build that up, but because on both sides, because on both inputs here they've got the A NAND B, so this term, this term is common to both, it means we can just implement it with one NAND gate and feed that into each one. So that's a bit more convoluted, but it's actually, it's made, it's helped us to remove uh, one of the NAND gates. Before we could build an XOR gate from five gates, and now we've built one from four gates. And then to get the XNOR is obviously very trivial. We've got our XOR implementation, and we can just follow that by a knot. So you can just stick, um, stick another NAND gate inverter on the front of it and that will turn the XOR into an XNOR.